Welcome to Bible 360 Matthew. Matthew focuses on God's fulfillment of his Old Testament promises. The three-tier genealogy at the beginning introduces Jesus as the promised seed of Abraham, the rightful heir to King David, and a child of the exile. Yahweh is loyal and committed to bringing salvation both to and through Israel. In the parables of the lost sheep and the coin, we can see Yahweh treasures his people and he's committed to seeking them out. Jesus calls 12 apostles to be the leaders of this new people of God, which signals healing and restoration that Israel has so desperately longing for ever since the destruction of the 10 northern tribes and later the exile of the Jews. John the Baptist is the bridge between the Testaments, preaching repentance and pointing out the failures of Israel's leadership to point people towards true repentance and faith. He reminds Israel of the basics and that God desires loyalty, justice, and a good heart, not mere rituals. Jesus is anointed in the Jordan River to fulfill Israel's original mission. Jesus does things the right way. He actually endures temptation and remains loyal in the wilderness and later at Gethsemane to God's plan. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus almost re-gives the Torah, only he claims to be able to get to the heart of the matter. He teaches what God wants in the beginning and how particular laws were meant to lead the people to live faithfully and harmoniously with one another and with their God. Jesus' teachings can be summed up in two words, loyalty and love. Loyalty and love to their God, to spouse, to their neighbors, and to the whole world. Jesus interacts with the people in the same kinds of way Yahweh did with Israel in the Old Testament. He heals and restores. He condemns faithless leaders and calls them to repent. Jesus performs many signs and miracles that demonstrate that Israel would do well to listen to him and put their faith in him. He gives bread in the wilderness like Moses, saves the disciples from storms like Jonah, and walks through water much like the Israelites in the Red Sea. Jesus invites us into the kingdom of heaven. He redefines what it means to be God's people, often through parables. Uh, the parable of the unmerciful servant, for instance, illustrates that those who reject forgiveness and mercy towards others are simultaneously rejecting the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is not going to be accepted by everyone, as the parable of the sower demonstrates. But even if only a few accept, it will be worth it. It's a wonderful thing. Jesus welcomes the little children, but challenges the rich man. And this demonstrates that the kingdom of heaven is about dependence upon God, not upon wealth or status or good works. God's kingdom encounters lots of resistance, however, which is the answer that Jesus even gives to John the Baptist when John is in prison. Some people and powers rage and wage war against this kingdom. In fact, God's kingdom will undoubtedly face persecution. They will be poor in spirit. They will mourn. They will be persecuted because they follow Jesus. But this does not mean that God has failed, nor is the solution to fight back or to establish an earthly kingdom. Rather, the solution is to trust in God's plan and allow him to deliver his people in his ways. Jesus repeatedly reveals that he'll be going to Jerusalem, handed over to the chief priests to be killed, but then God will re resurrect him. However, it's hard for Peter and everyone else for that matter to understand how God's kingdom could come about in any way other than how it did in the Old Testament. They expect a kingdom with clear political and geographic and legal boundaries. Uh, we can see the hope and expectation as Jesus arrives to the jubilant crowds on Palm Sunday, but also we can see the antagonism and fear of Jesus' opponents, particularly the most powerful group in Jerusalem, the Sanhedrin. It's no wonder they're offended by Jesus. Jesus gets progressively louder and more direct in his judgment of Israel's leadership. Jesus says, woe to the Pharisees who are blind guides and are cold-hearted hypocrites. He says, God will judge those in Israel who are obstinately refusing to God's Christ and plan a salvation. In the parable of the wedding feast or the parable of the tenants, among others, Jesus makes it clear that he's not simply trying to recapture the glory days or bring back things to the way they were. In fact, something new is required, and Jesus actually roundly condemns Israel's history and rejection of God's prophets and words. Uh, for those who reject God's Messiah, humility and reconciliation, their preference for violence and pride will lead to the temple being destroyed and Jerusalem being destroyed again, just like it had in 586 for the very same reasons. Salvation will not come to all who claim to be God's people, but to those who listen to and heed God's call in loving God, loving their neighbor. Jesus' actions, arguments, and prophecies against Israel place an unavoidable
unavoidable choice before the religious leadership. They must either repent and admit their failures and acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah and God's solution, or they must get rid of him. Although Jesus is aware of his impending death, his, he focuses on parting a lasting gift to his followers. Jesus is the Passover lamb whose death and blood will allow God's people to be saved and furthermore connected to him and to the salvation he will accomplish on the cross. They don't understand it yet, but he connects them to his death through this meal. At his crucifixion, the crowds mock Jesus and taunt him to come down, but little do they realize he is not there to save himself, but to save them. At his death, the temple curtain is torn from above, tombs split open, and every bodies are raised to the life. Even the centurion acknowledges Jesus as the Son of God. These are signs that something new is happening and the world is changing in a dramatic way. The resurrection is proof Jesus was not a lunatic, nor was he a false prophet. Rather, he was sent from the God of Israel to bring about God's plan of salvation. It comes through repentance and Jesus' death and resurrection. God's kingdom continues among us when we are baptized into this new people of God. Therefore, we listen to him, apply his instructions in our lives, and lean on his promises.